Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I want to talk about a topic that a lot of people in the comments and a lot of people I've talked to in the community are concerned with, and that is the MCU dictating the value and the overall price of a comic book. This has many, many layers to this, and I want to hear your guys' opinions after I kind of say my spiel, because this is something that I think can truly affect the comic book community long term in a negative way. I don't normally talk about speculation on the channel. I don't normally say, hey, go buy this book. But there are channels that are completely based around this, that are completely based around, you know, the next hot MCU movie, the next hot MCU show, whatever the case may be, and that why you should invest in and why you should collect those comic books. It seems like the entire comic book market is being kind of held captive by this. So many collectors' decisions are made based around you know, what is coming down the pipeline in the MCU. And I think that collectors may be doing this wrong. Now hold your horses before you put your pitchforks down, put your, your like little torches, your tiki torches down. Don't crucify me yet. I'm not telling you how to collect. What I'm saying is, is that if you, you chase this this white rabbit, you may end up with a collection that you not, you're not happy with. So say you bought all the hot keys from Black Panther. Well, what if you didn't really super like the movie? One, two, you don't really like Black Panther overall, but you bought the keys because somebody told you to buy the keys or you thought that that was the right thing to do because you saw the prices had kind of taken an increase. Then you're left with a collection that you don't necessarily like this this is this has many problems on many levels the mcu started in 2008 with iron man as we all know and that really kind of changed the game for everything as far as comic book characters on the big screen specifically in marvel and then i think the dark knight um was was it 2006 2007 i, I know it was in high school so those movies kind of set the tone for comic book movies in general going forward and what was possible. It was super exciting. It was incredible. I mean, this is what our heroes, this is what our characters from our beloved comic book pages can be realized as on the big screen. It's exciting. But Marvel Comics have been around for a lot longer than that, dating back all the way to the 60s, where many of our uh, teams and our, our heroes, most of our teams and our heroes came from in that time period. So what I see that happens is this isn't a short-term quick money grab situation. I mean, this this comic books have been around for a long time and people have been collecting and people have been speculating for a whole, whole long time. And I think a lot of people kind of just woke up to this they just decided that they were going to speculate. And I see a trend that happens every single time one of these movies or show, shows occur. And this, I'm going to kind of break this down to what I think happens. First thing that happens is there's some kind of tip or some kind of leak that there's some character or some show is going to be made in the future. And you need to buy this book now because it may be more valuable in the future. So what we see is a price increase many times significantly from what it originally was. An example of this is Oblivion Song by Robert Kirkman and then the Jake Gyllenhaal speculation that he was going to be making this Oblivion Song. Oblivion Song is an image comic, if, if you don't know. The second thing that happens is there's some official statement that comes down from either Marvel, DC, what, what are the, one of these companies or one of the companies that's making the movies, you know, Warner Brothers, whatever, Sony, that there is going to be a, a movie or a show based around this. So then you see an additional spike, but it's not as large usually as that first reveal, but you do see some. The next thing that happens is kind of like a teaser trailer, or we get like, you know, actual video of this character or that it's, it's being revealed that this character or this thing that we're speculating on is shown. That's when you're at a fever pitch. That means, you know, everybody's buying, everybody's looking for it. That's when you see these prices go up like crazy. And to be honest, if you're going to play this game, that is the time to sell. The next thing that happens is the full trailer is released. So, 
Um, if we follow the most recent example of this is the, the Wakanda forever. So Shuri, it was teased that she was going to be the next black Panther, which seemed like the next, the next logical step. Then we got the, uh, the, the kind of confirmation from Marvel that that, that was what was going to happen. And then we got the teaser, teaser trailer that, you know, it was going to be an emotionally powerful movie. And then, you know, Shuri was in the black Panther costume and then we got the official trailer, and what you saw was the prices of Black Panther number two, first appearance of Shuri, start they start going down, they start decreasing. Then the next thing that happens is the movie comes out, and that is the absolute worst time to sell this these books because it it literally decreases significantly. And then after the movie's been out for a little while. Forget about it. The if if the movie is in any way negatively received by the critics or the fans, it's in the it's in the pooper. It's in the tank. Like these books just decrease like crazy. This pattern alone should concern you as a collector or a speculator, whoever's watching this video. I guess we're all some type of version of both of those things. It should concern you that this pattern should not dictate your you're collecting and you're uh, speculating and you're selling and buying because everything is so volatile. If you if you strictly follow this kind of prototype, then you are going to be buying things based around the hype and the excitement of the thing, and then trying to sell it as soon as you possibly can when the fever pitch is at its highest. I, I don't even know what to say to that. It's um, it's. I don't really think that you care about the character. You're not you're not passionate about the character. You're just trying to, to grab the zeitgeist. There is a couple other examples of this that are exactly what I'm talking about here, and that this should not dictate why a book is valuable. ASM three sixty one. First appearance of Carnage. We all know what this book is. This book has been heavily printed. The book was was 92. So, I mean, literally the absolute pinnacle of comic book collecting and speculation, speculation, and then the obvious, the crash. This book is not rare. This book can be found in high grades. This book absolutely went to the moon when we got that teaser, we got the speculation uh, that you know we knew Cletus Cassidy was coming, it was going to be played by Woody Harrelson, they're going to make another Venom movie. The book, the, the book went crazy. This book can be bought for a fraction of what it was going for. Now, let's just say this. Is Carnage less cool of a character because the movie was bad? Well, let, let, let's just say... Let's take let's take uh, your opinion of the movie out of it. Is Carnage less cool of a character now that the movie has come and gone? The answer is no. Is this book more or less valuable than it was before? Well, in reality, this book should not have increased to the level it was because one, it's overprinted. Two, it's not a rare book in any way. These books are out there in high grade. This is not an example of something that had true value. It was inflated. It was overinflated. This is not a book. This is this is an example of a book that you should not be buying when it's at its fever pitch. Now, that being said, this book should not have crashed to the point where it's like Carnage is just a throwaway character now. Carnage is a major Spider-Man villain. And, and has so much potential, so many cool covers, so many crazy storylines, such a crazy ca uh, character overall that it just it just crashes, goes away. Other examples of this are Eternals. Eternals, exact same situation. Literally, comic book dealers couldn't give Eternal books away, Eternals books away before all the speculation with the movie, and now that the movie was not well received, it's in the pooper again. I mean, it's just, it's the same pattern. Thank you guys for sticking around in this video if, you, if you're at this point. Is why are comic book events not 
in the same speculation realm? Why are we not seeing these huge fluctuation in prices or huge surges in prices with comic book events? So an example of this is, in mo very most recently is the whole is the all the Venom uh, saga with Null stuff, the King in Black. So that storyline kind of covered. Eddie Brock passing the helm of Venom to Dylan Brock, and then we had that subsequent run where Dylan Brock took took the helm of Venom, and he was the new Venom. Everybody was crazy speculating on that book, which obviously this was like the peak boom of comic books where everybody was buying everything. But we 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 saw that we we saw that the the helm was going to be passed. We knew that that was going to be a story arc that was going to happen. We knew King and Black was going to be a story arc. We knew Null was going to be a huge part of that run. And then what happens to that book? So I think it's like Venom number nine. So we had like a crazy we had a crazy price surge right when that book right when it was revealed that Dylan Brock was going to continue as the helm. That would have been the time to sell that book. And then, after it was kind of accepted, it just the book crashed again to nothing. So why are these 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 comic book spec or these comic book storyline speculation books not as valuable as the movie stuff? Well, I think there's a couple things going on. I think the people that are speculating on a lot of these books don't actually read the comics or follow the storyline at all. They're kind of clueless as to what's happening in the actual stories of the comics and what's happening in comics in general. And I think maybe the second thing that's happening is that the comic book speculation people and investing people are more comic book movie fans and, and show fans as opposed to true comic book fans. I think that's what's happening. This is a dangerous time for comic book collectors overall, um, you can really kind of buy into that hype. You could kind of you can buy into these things and it not pan out in a big way. And what's going to happen is eventually there is going to be a slump in the movies. The movies are going to be eventually going to be bad, and many can argue that we're we're in that right now. What happens when the movies? stop being good when they stop being in game and infinity war and they start being more uh eternals um i i don't i don't know what's going to happen to comic books in general is that what sinks the ship is that what happens is that's what's happening right now with the comic book prices or is it is it truly related to inflation and, and the recession and the market? I don't know. Is it a combination of all these things? I don't know. I want to hear your guys' opinion. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If at any point in time you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, subscribe for more. Take care.